Hello, I'm Kimberly Acosta. Welcome to the Native News Update. It's Friday, October 15th. And many of the stories you hear here can be found at our website, IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. A Seattle Police Department panel has reached a preliminary finding that the shooting of a Native American woodcarver was not justified. Seattle Police said the Firearms Review Board concluded its hearing on October 4th and presented the findings to Police Chief John Diaz. A final determination will be made after a court inquest is completed. The woodcarver, John T. Williams, was carrying a small knife when he was shot four times in the right side by Seattle Police Officer Ian Burke on August 30th. The Seattle Times reported that Burke was told to surrender his gun and badge after the preliminary finding was made. He remains on administrative leave. On October 14th, the Washington State Supreme Court said the tribal police can pursue non-Indian drivers suspected of tra traffic infractions beyond reservation boundaries and detain them until authorities arrive. The court's ruling was a reconsideration of an opinion that it issued last year in which it unanimously reached the same conclusion. The court withdrew the earlier opinion because of an error and this time the judges split 6-3. to three. The majority said that under the 1855 Treaty of Point Elliot, it was okay for a Lumi Nation officer to continue pursuing a suspected drunk driver, Loretta Erickson, beyond the reservation's boundaries in 2005 and detain her until county deputies arrived. They also said the stop was justified under the doctrine of fresh pursuit, which allows officers to cross jurisdictional lines when there's a threat to life and property. The U.S. Department of Justice is close to settling an 11-year-old discrimination case filed by Native Americans against the U.S. Department of Agriculture. In Keeps Eagle v. Vilsack, plaintiffs in the class action suit contended the USDA discriminated against Native Americans in their applications for farm service agency loans and loan servicings while white farmers received loans and better service. The case first began in 1997 when ranchers George and Marilyn Keepsegal of Fort Yates, North Dakota, believed federal farm officials had not fairly decided on their loan application. The Keepsegals alleged the USDA's farm loan program forced them to sell 380 acres of family land in 1999, creating financial problem problems and pushing them into foreclosure. The lawsuit, which was filed in November of 1999, asked for compensation for Native Americans who were denied loans or debt servicing by the USDA between 1981 and 1999. If the bulldozers come to Glen Cove Mound area, the city expects the local Native American community and its supporters to peacefully but effectively seek to block the work, said an activist had said. A gathering and ceremony was planned on a for October 16th at the site in Vallejo, California. Bradley Angel of San Francisco-based Green Action for Health and Environmental Justice says his organization was approached by the Vallejo Intertribal Council in early summer and agreed to help fight the Greater Vallejo Recreation District's plan to desecrate the sacred ancient burial site. Glen Co Clove was an important Native American village for thousands of years and remains a spiritually important area to local Native peoples, Angel had said. The Greater Vallejo Recreational District's General Manager, Shane McGoffey, said his agency seeks only to improve the area by removing two old buildings, installing some picnic tables, a small parking lot, restrooms, and restoring natural vegetation. A Montana State University graduate student who grew up hunting agates along the Little Bighorn River now plans to study abandoned mines to see if, they're con if they are contaminating on the Crow Reservation. Anita Morinal said she will use her 2010 Dennis and Phyllis Washington Native American Graduate Fellowship to examine old uranium and vandium mines in Montana and Wyoming. The $10,000 fellowship will allow Morinal, a Crow tribal member, to collect rock samples from abandoned mines in the prior mountains of Montana and possibly in the Little Sheep Mountain Antic Line in Wyoming. One Nation, a float dedicated to honoring Native American culture, will be the RFD TV entry in the 2011 Tournament of the Roses Parade. The massive float, designed and built by Phoenix Decorating, will pay tribute to sights and sounds of Native America and will feature Brulee, the award-winning Native American musical group. 
RFD TV and Paul LaRoche, founder of Brulee, hope to create a historic endeavor that will shed a long overdue spotlight on the native culture. Both parties hope to connect global cultures in friendship and in unity in an effort to support the 2011 Rose Parade's theme of building dreams, friendships, and memories. The float stretches an impressive 75 feet in length. And that's the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.